Lawrence of Arabia, six track SR, pre master, real 180. All you want is someone holding down the Turkish right. But I'm going to give them Damascus. We'll get there before you do. This is Robert Harris, a preservationist currently working on the restoration of Lawrence of Arabia. The one sequence where he says, and that's the difference, I'm a leader because someone pins crowns on me. This, I think, is it. The year is 1989, and in the decades since the film's release, the sound mix on the original negative has drastically degraded, so much so that it became necessary to bring Peter O'Toole in for an ADR session, over 20 years after he played the role. All right. Play it just a few times, Richard. Okay. Just keep yeah, on just whizzing it around until I get it. Side. All you want is someone holding down the Turkish right, but I'm going to give them Damascus. You've probably heard the statistic that virtually half of all films made before 1950 are entirely lost, and this is for a variety of reasons. However, the most significant is the fact that most studios simply didn't see the need for preservation. Film was not thought of as a viable form of art. And that's why restoration is so undeniably important. Because films weren't initially valued, many were improperly stored, but even more, were just simply thrown away like trash. And of the ones that have lasted, many are in terrible condition. But thankfully, preservation efforts began to be taken seriously in the 1980s, when people like Robert Harris and Martin Scorsese set about restoring as many films as possible. In the early 90s, Scorsese established the Film Foundation to address this problem, and one of their big projects became the restoration of the 1948 classic, The Red Shoes for which terrible storage conditions had left the original camera negative, scratched, faded, and covered in mold. However, restorations are no easy task, and many films have suffered from faulty efforts. And believe it or not, one of those is Star Wars. The original 1977 version of the film has become increasingly harder to view due to never-ending and, frankly, obnoxious changes inflicted by George Lucas. But behind the scenes, a dedicated group of fans worked for years to restore the film they first fell in love with, spearheaded by a fan named Harmy. Not only did Star Wars have a huge impact on the movie industry, you know, with its groundbreaking visual effects and sound design, uh, but it's also become an important part of not only American, but also global culture. Uh, and I'm convinced that the special edition greatly diminishes the immense historical value of these films. Uh, so I do believe that people should be able to view the original Oscar-winning versions of these films, uh, and that they should be presented in a quality that will do them justice. To begin any restoration means gathering as many sources as possible. Okay, so let's say we've got the original negative here, and scene one is good, scene three is good, but scene two is really damaged beyond repair. Well, what you can do is go find, say, a release print that played in a theater somewhere that's still in good shape to then sub in for that scene. That's the way restorations are done. They're sort of Frankenstein together from a wide variety of sources. So with a professional like Robert Harris, that means starting with the original negative and working your way out. But with Harmy, that meant turning to things like Laserdisc and VHS transfers and then most impressively, a donated 35mm print that was scanned using a home-built machine. But even with the wide variety of sources, repair is still almost always necessary. Broken perforations have to be mended, splice tape connecting frames has to be replaced, the strip has to be manually cleaned of as much mold and dust as possible, and then run through what's called a wet gate, a chemical bath that erases a significant portion of scratches on the film. In more recent years, digital technology has taken on a primary role in restoration efforts. Once repaired, the original camera negative for the red shoes was scanned into a computer at a 4K resolution, where the restoration team set about digitally removing the most severe mold and color fringing that had affected the negative. Meanwhile, Harmy faced the challenge of replacing the special edition CGI with the original effects, done primarily through miniatures, model work, and matte paintings. To do this was no easy task, and often required rotoscoping elements from his multiple sources over the Blu-ray footage. Harmy's case presents an interesting line of thought. Fan edits of various films, including the Star Wars prequels, have existed for years, 
and although some may not technically consider Harmies a true restoration, it nevertheless meets the criteria. What remains interesting are the ethical questions his project presents. Whereas David Lean actively participated in the restoration for Lawrence, George Lucas has been adamantly opposed to releasing high-def versions of the non-special edition original trilogy. So what should we make of that? Legality aside, is it right to restore what Lucas does not consider the true version of his film? Who gets to say what the true version of any film is, especially if the filmmaker is no longer living? Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger, the directors of The Red Shoes, had both passed away by the time of the film's restoration. So who gets, or who should get, the final say as to how the film ends up? That may not sound that important, but consider this. Just ever so slightly tweaking the color can change a film entirely. It's that easy to get away from what was originally intended. That's the power restorations have. Upon completion, Lawrence of Arabia is given a wide re-release on 70mm. The Red Shoes is screened at the 2009 Cannes Film Festival, and later released by the Criterion Collection, and the lovingly dubbed D-Specialized edition of Star Wars remains available for download. Like anything and everything else in the film industry, restoration has evolved. It may not have been possible to restore the Red Shoes back in the 1980s when Robert Harris restored Lawrence, and it certainly wouldn't have been possible for a fan like Harmy to restore Star Wars. But digital technology has changed the business, and the democratizing effects of the internet are only now beginning to show. Star Wars was not the first fan restoration, and nor will it be the last. But what ultimately matters, though, are the films themselves. Tossing around a phrase like the unsung heroes of cinema isn't something that should be done lightly or flippantly, or else it will lose its meaning. But for my part, I have no problem ascribing it to people like Robert Harris, Martin Scorsese, and DeHarmy. These and others are the people who are quite literally saving cinema. <laughs>